stationary waves. Uh, if we don't get this all finished today, we'll just do it in the next class. It's, this is actually the last topic in waves. Yeah, waves is the smallest section of the course. The biggest section was mechanics. Yeah. Yeah. Fields and atoms. Oh, I think I'll do the experiments. Yeah. Yeah. Ah, yeah, don't worry. We'll talk about it and we'll spread it out and it'll be fine. Have you finished your chemistry lab report? And how was that? Well, it's not finished. Then. First draft. First draft. First, yeah. Okay. And look, you're still alive. It didn't kill you, so. <laughs> Nearly, yeah. But you're still you're still here, so it's fine. Uh, right. So uh, a standing wave, also called a stationary wave. Does anyone know what that is? No. It's a wave that oscillates in one constant position. It can arise in a stationary medium as a result of interference between two waves traveling in opposite directions. Now, what does that mean? Actually, it's funny that you're on YouTube up because I usually show students a video of this because the video really makes it clear. Uh, so before you write that down, we'll look at a video of a stationary wave. So roughly speaking, when you picture a sound wave, you picture it moving out, you know? But you could have a wave that's in one spot moving up and down. Isn't that how the ocean waves work? No, the ocean waves move outwards. Oh. You know? Uh, light wave moves out. But you can have a wave that's stationary moving up and down uh, in a very special way. So how do I search here? Go to the the, here we go, yeah. And I need to type in stationary wave or stand. It's also called a standing wave. D I. Stand by me. Yeah, no, not, not stand by me. Space. Now I'm sure when I put in W, I'll. Yeah, there we go. Ah, no. Yeah. Uh, this is the. I think. I, yeah, here we go. This is a. Well, it's a bit long, I just want a shorter video. Well, I'll play it and I might... Uh... No, not that. Okay, I'll play this one. See what that's like. How do you fast forward? You can... Okay, there's another box. Yeah. Yeah. The heck is this? <coughs> oh, yeah, okay. So just a string. And there's a little... Um, motor here at this side so it just vibrates uh, anyone speak French? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> do you want to translate it as we go? now there you go, you see that they're standing waves oh you can actually do that so anyways I, uh, we'll stop that there so that's a good video of showing you what a standing wave looks like. Um, now, how do they work? So the key thing here, what happens is this. You have your string, or whatever it is, and if you form a small wave, like this, what will happen is it will move, hit the wall, maybe there's a wall here, and then it'll go back. You know, and then maybe you have another, maybe you have something here vibrating up and down. Do you understand? Yeah. But if you make this big enough, like make, maybe you make it this big, it will hit the wall and come back very quickly. But something special happens if you can make the wavelength the same length as the string. So if you make the wave like this size, then what happens is, it instantly reflects and travels backwards. So let's think about this. It goes up, down, and next is, it would want to continue up, wouldn't it? But it reflects, and so instantly it goes back like this. So what you have happen is, first you get this, 
then you get this. And that moves so quickly, when you look at it, it looks like this. When, when your eyes just see the two together at once. Now it's not really two, it's just going up and down, up and down, up and down. So in the definition, you see, this is what I mean when I say interference between two waves traveling in opposite direction. Why is interference when two waves, what happens? Interference? They combine and they form a new wave. Yeah. What's happening here is this wave reflects and forms a new wave that interferes with itself, that adds to its so, but then, wouldn't they cancel it, each other? It, you know, yeah, you know, so, yeah, that's true. Yeah, I suppose that's true. But the other, I suppose it's not quite like interference where we have two waves coming together because when the first wave reflects, the first wave is kind of gone. So I guess, yeah, actually... Oh, it, so it's really... So it goes from... One way to the other, one way to the other. Yeah. Like super fast. So yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I get, yeah. Well, yeah, yeah maybe, well. maybe interference is not the best choice of words, but this is what it was in the definition. One wave hits the wall, reflects, and becomes a new wave, replacing the first wave. But this reflection happens so quickly, it appears to be just one wave moving up and down. So it's, it's kind of interfering with itself. It's making this sort of effect. Um... Okay, I think I have a picture here. Yep, there you go. That was from the video I showed you. So if we can write this down. I think Sack will watch this later. Let's see. Like, share, and subscribe. Yeah, we'll see. Like, you think you will? Have mm -hmm. you sorted that live stream thing? Oh yeah, I keep forgetting about that. Man, I'm so busy. I had to submit my master's thesis on Tuesday morning. So that was this week. Then I'll have to do my presentation on it next week. The uh, defending. The defending. Viva, yeah. Uh, I got my results for semester two today. So, doing okay. Average 80%. Mm. Nice. Nice. <laughs> There's 100 students in my class. And they gave everyone a six month extension. Uh, and I'm the only one who said, I don't want an extension. And they said, no, you should take the six month extension and you should you work really hard and get the best result that you can. And my answer was, uh, but I got 80% in my exams. So even if I only get 40% in my thesis, which is a D, I still get a B. And this really confused them. They're like, but you should, you should work really hard and, and get the best grade that you can. I'm like, yeah, but... <laughs> yeah, like, like even if I only get 40, I still got a B. So like, you know, I, I, I really confused the supervisor, the, 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 the coordinator. Which it's data, big data. Uh, big data. Yeah. But they just couldn't understand why a student A wouldn't take a six month extension on an assignment and B would be happy with getting 40%. You know, it, it, it baffled them. Right, you doing it here. Athlone IT. Athlone is a, a IT in the Midlands. Mm -hmm. Okay. Huh? Home. It's an online course. Oh. So I can't really say, you know, <laughs> I can only say how it is online. I couldn't say how it is when you're there. Uh, okay, do you have that written down? I see two people still writing. Gina, you have that? Dorian? Yeah. Okay, can I continue? Yep. Yeah. So, uh, the standing wave has names to it. We have a part called the node, where it's the point of minimum amplitude, and the anti-node, which is the point of maximum amplitude. So, uh, in the diagram, you see these blue points here. 
they vibrate up and down a lot, don't they? These are called the antinodes. Whereas the point here, 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 and here, they look like they're not moving, right? They're called the nodes. So if I go back to this picture here, do you see this point here? Mm -hmm. What was that one? No, no. no that one's the node, oh, yeah. and that one's the node, and here, anti-node, anti-node, anti-node. Uh, and at the end? No. 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 So, um, you don't need to write down the definition, but you need to at least draw the picture and label in node and anti-node. You got that? Continue? Now, oh, got that, Diego? Yeah, yeah. yeah. If the distance between the nodes or the anti nodes is known, then there's a very simple way to know the wavelength. So, can we go back to this picture here? Uh, look carefully. Imagine you know the distance between two anti nodes. Or say you know the distance between two nodes, which is the same as the distance between two anti nodes. Let's call that distance D. What would be the wavelength? Would it equal a half D, D, 2D? Like, what would it be? It'd be 2D, wouldn't it? Because the distance between the antinodes is half a, a half a wave. So if you know the distance between the nodes and the antinodes, then you know the wavelength. It is just twice this distance. Uh, and I don't need to draw that because you all figured that out. Okay, so if you want to write something down, you could say something like lambda. So if you knew this distance from the antinodes, we call that distance as say d, for example, then you know that the wavelength is equal to 2d. So it's the same as the distance between a crest? Yeah, that's it. Distance between crest and crest. Okay, you all okay with that? Makes sense? Yeah, continue. Now I'm waiting for the two over here. Are you writing a full sentence, is it? Or? No. Yeah. Gina, you got that? Yeah. Okay, so. Uh, <clears throat> if a string is held at both ends, the ends become nodes. The length of the string then becomes a measure of which waves the string will entertain. The longest wavelength is called the fundamental. Half the wavelength of the fundamental fits on the string. And shorter wavelengths can also be supported. <coughs> now, and the frequencies are multiple to the fundamental. Now, this is very difficult, but actually... Um, easier to explain the picture here so suppose I have a string here to here um, I could make 
uh, many waves here. I could have one wave that goes like this, right? Or I could have maybe one wave that goes like this, okay? Or maybe I could have one wave that goes like this. Now, in my three examples, one, sorry, <laughs> one, two, three, which wave has the biggest wavelength? First, second, or third? The third one has the biggest wavelength. If this is D, what would be the wavelength? 2D. 2D, very good. So this is a special wave because it's the biggest wave that the string can support. And this is called the fundamental wave, or the fundamental. Everything else, like this one here, they're called harmonics. Okay. Now, uh, in a moment, I'll actually give you a picture to copy down, uh, I think. But, yeah, 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 yeah. So this is what I was drawing. Let me explain. So you see, the first one is the biggest wave, isn't it? That's called uh, the fundamental. It's also called the first harmonic. Uh, the next one, this, this is the next biggest wave you could draw. Why can't I have something that's in between here? Why, why, why can't I have something that maybe is a little bit bigger than this, but smaller than this, like it goes over to here? Uh, yeah. yeah, you have to finish on a node. Yeah. And then this is the third biggest one you can fit, and this is the fourth biggest one. Okay. So, um, there's another word for it. Yeah, there's another word here. I, I misspoke. I told you we call the first one the fundamental and the next one's the harmonics. I was mixing up with something else. We call the first one fundamental and we can call them all harmonics. And this first one is just called the first harmonic. But there's a term in music called something that we don't use on this course. Over, 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 over something. Over over something oh I can't remember but there is a, a term in music where you call this the fundamental and then these ones have a different name but it doesn't matter it doesn't matter that's not on the course for this course this is called the fundamental and it's also called the first harmonic and then we have the second and the third and the fourth okay now they will ex they expect you to know this so they could have a question like uh, draw a string in the third harmonic, for example. Now this is actually, it's easy to remember how this works. The first harmonic is the biggest wave, the second harmonic is the second biggest, and third is third biggest, and so on. So it's easy to remember. Could you carefully copy this into your notebook? Here comes the rain, just in time for going home. This is your last class today as well, isn't it?
Have you got that? Uh, Dorian, in the exam, I've never seen them ask you to draw one more than four. Okay, have you got that drawn, Dorian? That's okay. Much like yourself, Diego. Zing! <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, Diego. I couldn't. I don't. I don't really mean it. I just couldn't resist. I just. Sure? I just couldn't resist. I it was. <laughs> it just. It was so nicely thrown to me, and I just. I have to say it. Look, Zach will appreciate it when he's watching the video later. You know, he would have said it if he was here. I should have said it in a South African accent, perhaps. <laughs> <laughs> oh, uh, Diego, uh, Zach can do a very good impersonation of yeah. you. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. When you weren't here. When you were late. What video? Yeah, okay. It wasn't recorded yet. Oh, yeah. So now I'll have to ask you to do uh, an impersonation of Zach. <laughs> Super bad at it. <laughs> okay. Uh, now, have you got that? Mm. Yeah, continue. Mm. <laughs> oh, you know deep down I still like you, Diego. Do you? <laughs> <laughs> I like all my students. Uh, all right, continue. Now, um, this is when you have a string, and uh, now the next situation is when you have a wind instrument like a pipe here. Um, so there's a couple of tips I can give you to help you remember how to draw these. When a sound wave is formed in a pipe, there will always be a node at the closed end and an anti-node at the open end. Let me show you what I mean. <coughs> so suppose you have a, a pipe like this and there's a sound wave inside the pipe from the vibrating air, okay? This is what's called the closed end, obviously, and this is called the open end, okay? If it's open here, you always, always, always have an anti-node, okay? And at the closed end, you always, always, always have a node. So you could have some wave like this, So that must be a node, and then here must be an anti-node. And of course, it's possible to have something like this. What's at each end here? An anti-node. An anti-node. So it could go like that, potentially. And it's not really possible to have this, though. Why not? Because it's closed. Because what? Yeah. Yeah, how are you supposed to play a musical instrument that is uh, closed at both ends? Like. Yes, yeah, well, it could be a vacuum inside, couldn't it? Uh, so there'd be no sound vibrating. So we, we have at least one open end always. But we, I mean, we could have two open ends. Now, I think the next slide I have. Oh, so this is how you make musical notes. Okay, so for example, this. have a different sound than this okay we can work this out actually that's a good question because you have to form the V equals uh, uh, lambda F mm -hmm. so F equals V over lambda so the higher frequency is the smaller wavelength so which has the smaller wavelength yeah, so that would have the higher note. Yeah. Now I think the next slide I have is actually for you to draw 
these. Uh, yeah. Now wait, 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 wait. Oh, there's the word overtone. That was it. Uh, don't, don't bother with that. You well, I mean, you can if you want, but you don't need to know overtone for the exam. Now uh, you notice that the numbering is a bit different. So this one here we call the first harmonic. This one here we call the third harmonic. This we call the fifth harmonic, and so on. This we call the first, this we call the second, and this we call the third. Now that might seem a bit confusing. It's almost like we don't have a second or a fourth here. So, can anybody figure out how the numbering works? It's obviously not one, two, three, because this is not one, two, three. It's, it's the number it's the of the numbers. Yes, that's one way to think of it. The three is the three here, and the five is the five here. But there's there's no fraction here. No, it's because of the nodes. Maybe it's how many nodes are anti nodes. So, for example, how many anti nodes are here? Or how many nodes are here? One, two. No. How many anti nodes? One, two. So, you know. No. You can't see how it works. Okay, I'll tell you. This is how it works. So the first one is always called the first one. Right? And the harmonic number is <coughs> how many waves compared to the first one you have. So for example, how much of a wave is in this pipe? A quarter. How much is in this pipe? The next one is three quarters. You have three times the amount of wave here than you did in the first one. Here you have five quarters. You have five times the wave amount than that, that you had here. You see? Here you have half a wave, <coughs> uh, a crest to a trough. You have half a wave. Whereas here you have one full wave, crest, trough, back to crest. You have twice the wave here than what you had here. So you have the second harmonic. Yeah? I see Gina is thinking deeply about it. Are you happy with this or not happy? You can be not happy with this. Oh, I'm looking at your eyes and your eyes are saying I'm not happy with this. Yes, you're all unhappy with this, aren't you? Aren't you? I don't even get why it's one fourth one way of the first one. Yeah. Let's, let's look at the first one as an example, okay? So, we have closed, open. Closed, open, sorry. What is the biggest wave? Well, if I did a wave like this, do I have a node? Do I have an anti-node? But the wavelength is from here to here. It's kind of small. Could I have a bigger wave? I could. So. What about if I do something like, sorry, this. That's a bigger wave, but it's not the biggest wave because there's one wavelength, okay? So I need to imagine what is the biggest wave I could draw. So I could start, go up to a crest here. If I zoom out and draw in an X and a Y axis, what I've done is put in the first one quarter of the wave. This is the biggest wave. For example, if this musical instrument was a length L, what would be the wavelength of the wave I've put inside here? 4L. Very good, 4L. The next biggest wave, what would that be? Let me try and draw it for you. Uh, start again, here. And um, I would need to finish on the next anti-node, which would be like here. So I have to go up, down, and down to the crest at the bottom here. So it's kind of harder to see, but this time I have three quarters of a wave. Here I have half of a wave. This one I have three times 
the proportion of the wave. So we call this harmonic tray, and this is harmonic one. Yeah? Okay. Now I see the eyes of understanding. This is better. Right. It's hard to see it when you have It's to hard it's when it's small too, yeah. Um, so let me give you an example of a common mistake maybe in the exam. You know, they give you a pipe and they say, draw the uh, third harmonic. So the student thinks, okay, well, that's the first one. This is the second one. And so this is the third one. And they've not realized that you count differently here and they've gone one harmonic too far, you know. Uh, so be careful when it's closed open, okay. What we did earlier was know it, know it with the string, that's fine. And here is open, open, that's fine, one, two, three, four, five. Be careful with closed open. Okay, so now you need to carefully copy this into your notebook. So, Diego, big day tomorrow, huh? 11 p.m. tomorrow. Excuse me? 11 p.m. tomorrow. For what? You don't know what's happening. I thought you are European. The Brexit. Oh, is it? I didn't even... I know, I... The... The... 11 p.m. The p.m. The yesterday, though. Yep. 11 p.m. tomorrow. Yep. Nice. See you. <laughs> <laughs> Au revoir. Au revoir. No. Oh, that would be fine. Everything's secure for that. No issue. No, it just be seeing what type of trade deal Boris Johnson can get now with Europe. Europe is hard, but it's difficult. Think so. Think so. They won't. They, there's no reason for them to give him a, a good no. deal. Uh, a worse situation. In the short run, at least in the long run, maybe they may manage. I said no. I think it'll be a bad deal in the long run as well. Yeah, I think so. I mean, the European market is too, it's too big. It's too important. And it's still running. Yeah. Because all the countries in the balance and stuff. Yeah. It's true, actually. There's more people looking to join. Yeah. yeah. So it's only going to become a bigger marketplace. kind of a French idea, isn't it? French and German. French and German, yeah. But maybe more French? Yeah, I think so. The thing is that now in, so France, for example, has a few planes sharing for withdrawal and yeah, yeah. things, sharing with uh, Germany and Luxembourg, and the same happens between... Um, Germany, Germany has an air, aircraft carrier, don't they? Germany, no. They don't? They have a small, super small name. France have an aircraft France carrier? France have the Charles de Gaulle. Yeah. Charles de Gaulle, yes. Nuclear powered. Aircraft carrier. Aircraft carrier. Just the one? Just one? One, I think so. Yeah. One or two. Yeah, they okay. have also nuclear powered submarines. Yeah. Yes, okay. It's the second biggest army in like, military. Is it? Europe, I think. Really? I don't know that. After England. Germany or uh, in no, in Germany? Germany. Germany. After yeah. England. Yeah. Well, yeah, UK. Yeah, UK, yeah. And then it would be Italy or Spain. I don't know. Mm. Maybe Spain. Keep an eye on Catalan, you know. Catalan. Yeah. I can't 
can't see anything happening. It's uh, it's impossible. Uh, it's too important to stay in that region. But it's not even that. It's that. And the constitution the too. Yeah, and the constitution doesn't even allow it. Yeah. That's why we have the trials. Like yep. Yeah. No, I saw that. Yeah. yeah. You make a mistake. They're tough to draw, aren't they? They're tough to draw. But look, the bad news is they might ask you to draw one of these in the exam and to label the nodes and the anti nodes. So yeah, it doesn't have to be really to scale. Yeah, just be reasonable, you know, don't don't make it look totally ridiculous. Got it all drawn for him? No. Okay. Any of you switch to Go mode? The new the new mobile network? No. Looks okay for me, yeah. You're still with Tree, is it? No, no, no. Is it? Yeah. Slow how's the internet speed? Slow. Slow, is it? Yeah. I have mobile phone for twenty years, thirty years. Vodafone. Um I have also Spotify for Vodafone probably has a, a good network. Yeah. Yeah. Right, do you really have that? Which one is the biggest one here? I think Vodafone. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, I'd say it is, yeah. Got it? Uh, who are we waiting for? Harry, you nearly got it. Gina, you got it? Yep. <coughs> now, um, uh, uh, I what I'll do is. You can write this down next time. Uh, I just want to explain with a picture first what the end correction is, but we'll continue it next time from there. And you could draw this picture if you want to. So, uh, for example, uh, imagine you had a, a pipe here. And let's say, whoops, sorry. Let's say you have the fundamental wave in it. The fundamental one would be, uh, oh, rats. Fundamental one would be like that, okay? And the, the pipe is a length L. So what would be the wavelength here? It would be 4L, good. However, oh, uh, 4L, yeah? Um, however, 
there's actually a small problem because it turns out that the anti node here doesn't actually line up perfectly with the end of the pipe. What tends to happen is that it kind of falls just ever so slightly, like really, really slightly outside the pipe. So it doesn't, doesn't quite match up perfectly. So the lambda won't really equal 4L, it'll be roughly equal to 4L. To be a bit more precise, will the lambda be more than 4L or, or less than 4L? What do you think? It should be a little bigger. So what we do is we uh, have what's called an end correction. We add a little length to the L. So this little extra piece here, we call that delta L. And this is called the end correction. Now, believe it or not, <coughs> there isn't actually a clear formula for calculating delta L, surprisingly. Um, there's different formulas and they all kind of work pretty well, but there's not like a this is how you calculate it formula. So I think um, some of the formulas, they use the diameter in calculating delta L. Um, the delta L is proportional to the diameter, you know. Uh, but some some uh, some formulas maybe they might use the diameter squared. You know what I mean? Like it's there's not like there's one good formula. Okay. So in the exam, we don't use a formula to calculate delta L. We use a different method for calculating delta L, and that's what I we'll do next time after you we look at the definition and we look at some examples. So I think what would be just good to finish with is this diagram and then we'll give the definition and examples next time then. Okay? So can you copy this diagram down? End correction, yeah. Hmm? The green is the anti-node, and I'm saying in real life, the anti-node actually falls outside the pipe slightly. for lunch was good but I'm stuck now I'm stuck Are you going back to the I cycled to the train station so but I'll be cycling in the wind extra effort I think so yeah I think so You guys got that? Now, uh, just before you go, I was talking to Dorian actually before class and 